Hey gang, it's JC and this is your Daily Dose for Tuesday, October 12th, 2010. A cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. You can get us on your mobile phone these days. Archives top of the page, Eye Candy Archives. Bottom of the page, Dave Murray's weather forecast and the audio on iTunes. We return to the airwaves on Monday, October 25th, a little less than two weeks away now. We're going to do the 10 to 1 show on the Big 550 KTRS. Thank you for all the emails. Thank you for all of the Facebook messages. We are, by the way, 35 friends short of 2,000 on Facebook. Just go to Facebook and uh, we'll get you regular updates and stuff like that. That'll be cool. Election Day is three weeks from today. The big show business a story that broke yesterday. Courtney Cox and David Arquette separated. He's, yeah, he's 39, she's 46. Cox woke up one morning and looked at crossing the bed and said, I'm married to David Arquette. You know, now both of them, by the way, have been accused of cheating recently. She, with her co-star on Cougar Town, some actor I've never heard of before, and he, with this chick by the name of Jasmine Waltz, this is the one, if you can recall, a while back when Lindsay Lohan was in some bar celebrating her birthday and got punched in the face by another woman. This is the woman that David Arquette is being accused of cheating on. Uh, Hollywood. All right, Jupiter is making its closest pass to Earth in 50 years. Or at least that's what you should tell your super hot neighbor the next time she sees you on the roof with your telescope. Fox is developing an animated series based on Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, before last night's Monday Night Football game, uh, we are told that uh, Brett Favre apologized to his teammates and even cried. He's got two different sexual harassment cases sort of that he's juggling right now that are being investigated by the NFL. That could mean fines. It could even mean suspensions. Uh, I don't know. After seeing the game, he should have apologized after the game. What a lousy first half for his Minnesota Vikings. Almost came back, though. All right, uh, Channel 5. Last week and over the weekend was running promos for a special that they had put together on the, your 2010 St. Louis Cardinals. I'm not really sure what the point of that was, but I had to laugh at the promo because they said the St. Louis Cardinals, what went wrong? I thought to myself, what went wrong? What went wrong is that you became a baseball fan without understanding the game. Or maybe the promo writer started writing promos without understanding it. I don't know, maybe it takes somebody like me from Chicago, who was raised on the Cubs, to explain it to you that you don't win every year. You know, a ground ball that goes bouncing into the hole between third and short into left field that scores a couple of runs, that ball is hit two feet towards the third baseman. That's an inning-ending double play. And it's just complexities and little intricacies like that that, you know, when the ball doesn't bounce your way, and we saw a lot of that this year, a lot of injuries and stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, the Cardinals ended up five games out of first place. I wouldn't exactly call that a disaster. You just didn't make it. What went wrong? Cracked me up. By the way, you know, we're seeing some 100-mile-an-hour fastballs, you know, in the playoffs, and some of these guys firing up their 98, 99, 100. And I remember we used to have Fernando Vina the old Cardinals second baseman on the show on a regular basis. And the Cubs were coming to town for a weekend series, and Kerry Wood was going to be pitching. And Kerry Wood was consistently throwing in the upper 90s, 98, 99 miles an hour. And I remember asking Fernando Vina, you know, you see 90, 91, and 92 mile an hour fastballs, even 93, 94, all the time from, you know, almost any pitcher that goes out there right now is probably throwing in at least the mid or the, the lower 90s. And I said to him, you know, is it a really, I mean, it's only a couple of miles an hour more than what you normally see on a daily basis. Is it that much different when you see a nearly 100 mile an hour fastball? And he said, oh yes, it's a big, big difference. You almost have to decide if you're going to swing and where you're going to swing in the strike zone as he's winding up, because that's how fast it comes in. So even though you figure, well, what could the big difference be between 93 and 99? Apparently, at least according to Fernando Vigna, it was huge. All right, I was out on Friday night um, intending to go to Prime Bar over at West County Mall, which we used to go to all the time because at Prime Bar, oh, the shaved 
uh, prime rib sandwich on a bun. Just unbelievable. And of course, I come prancing up to the the doorway of Prime Bar, and it's closed. It's not there anymore. Does anybody have any idea what happened to Prime Bar? I mean, we go in there all the time. And Triple C would go in there on Thursday and Friday nights for happy hour, and you couldn't move in the place. What the hell happened to Prime Bar? Let me know, please. And then I ended up at Red Robin to get carry out. And I'm telling you, from the looks of the parking lot on Friday night at West County Mall, and then uh, over on Manchester at Red Robin, you would never know that anything was wrong with this economy, let me tell you. All right, Crystal Bauer Socks, the runner-up on American Idol, is recording a new album right now that's supposed to be released in December. It takes a long time. Well, first of all, they were on their tour, so the tour didn't end until I think it was late August. It was like a 21-city tour or 31-city tour. And then, you know, you got to write some songs and sit down and get in the studio, so it takes a little time to do it. And plus, you have to wait for all of that lead to wise mania to, to settle down. All right, today is Celebrity Tuesday. We do it every Tuesday here on, I almost said the showgram. Wow. Uh, here on jcontheline.com and the Daily Dose. And today we're going to talk about Howard Stern. And you know the rules here on the Daily Dose for Celebrity Tuesday. It can't be somebody that I just, you know, had a fleeting encounter with. It had to be somebody in show business that I actually spent some time with and actually got to know a little bit. And uh, I can only tell you that back in the early 1990s, one of my best friends became the new program director and operations manager at DC 101 in Washington where Howard was working. And so in the spring of 1982, I was brought to Washington to sort of function as, oh, you know, assistant to the program director, uh, sort of the uh, promotions marketing guy. And also I did a weekend uh, air shift. So I was on on Saturdays and Sundays. Well, by the time Howard left the station later that year, there were probably three people in the building still talking to him, and I was one of them. And he always used to say, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? I go, what do you mean, what am I doing? He's like, you belong on the air. Why? Are you, what? You're only on the air on the weekends. How, you should be doing a morning show somewhere. You're really funny, and I know about you. I knew, he knew some stuff that I had done in the past. He's like, what are you doing this for? I went through a brief period in the early 1980s after uh, about seven years of just bouncing from city to city to city. You know, when you do the sort of stuff that I do in like Grand Rapids and Lansing and Omaha, that shit doesn't fly in those small towns. And so I'd really gotten bounced around a lot and I was like, I don't know, what am I doing? So I, I went through this period where I thought it was maybe gonna legitimize my career by getting into management. And it was like a, just a brief uh, brain fart that I had. So Howard was instrumental in just telling me, yeah, get back on the air, you know. So, you know, Howard at that time in 82 was still in his uh, geeky misfit phase. This was before <coughs> he went super cool, you know, with the really long hair and he lost the glasses and he wore these long black coats and he looked like he belonged in ACDC or something like that. So this was still his geeky misfit phase. Now, if you saw the movie Private parts, you have to understand that that movie was a whitewash. They just portrayed Howard as this wacky DJ, this fun-loving DJ who had the big heart, you know, at the end of the day when it came right down to it, he was really this uh, this sort of a cream puff softy. And, and what they didn't show you was all of the confrontational stuff that Howard got into, and some of the stuff was ugly, and there was a lot of racially charged stuff that went on on Howard's show on a regular basis, just, you know, icky stuff that would give you the creeps. And uh, director Betty Thomas, who was from St. Louis and had been on St. Elsewhere, I mean, this is the woman who directed the Brady Bunch movies, okay? So she just wanted to make sort of a fun movie. And as a movie, oh, it's fantastic. But don't be watching Private Parts and get the idea that that's sort of like the Howard Stern story, because it isn't. So uh, Howard went off to uh, New York from Washington, and I came to St. Louis, and about the time that Ed Meese and his mind police in the first Bush administration was running around uh, handing out big fines to all the biggest radio morning shows in America. You know, Howard was getting fined, I got fined, and I used to see him every couple of years, and he was very, very nice to me. So one year we were at Grammy Week, broadcasting from the same hall, sort of, uh, at the Grammys, and, uh, and, I, and I told Howard, I said, you got to come on the show. So on the final day of broadcasting, he grabbed his wireless mic, and he came, and he was on the air. We sort of did a simulcast. We were on his four stations at the time, and he was on with us. This was at KSD. And uh, he was very, very nice. We had some great laughs, and Howard's always been great to me. 
And it's been a while now. I used to see him every couple of years, usually at the Grammys. But it's been a while now, and his life has changed considerably on and off the air. But I'd, i I got to believe that if I ran into him again, we'd probably still have a nice chat. Howard, a very, very complicated guy and simple at the same time. So that's your Celebrity Tuesday. All right, JC's Video Village, we're in the baseball playoffs right now, so we've got Daryl Hammond from Saturday Night Live when he was in the studio with us doing home run calls as celebrities. The Wayback Machine, Charles Jaco, CNN, back in 1991 during the Persian Gulf War, and this was a very, very electrifying moment when they woke uh, Charles up in the middle of the night because they thought there was this air raid and possibly a gas attack or Scud missiles coming in or something. It was pretty amazing. Wayback Machine, check it out with Charles. Our old school photo this week is Tim Curry from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. JC's Eye Candy, it's going to be another one of those ones you're going to send to everybody you know. We have the divorced Barbie. The Divorced Barbie today on JC's Eye Candy. It's right below what you're looking at right now. All right, that's it. JC's Daily Dose for Tuesday, October 12, 2010. A cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. In the meantime, we're going back on air KTRS in less than two weeks, Monday, October 25th, 10 to 1. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye. <laughs>